to start with the second part of this uh, session uh, with uh, Diego Corro's talk, who is in the uh, Mathematics Institute at uh, UNAM in the city of uh, Oaxaca. And he will speak about uh, singular Riemannian foliations and topological rigidity. Thanks, I want to thank the organizers for the invitation to, to talk here. So foliations have been uh, around for a while and they are very good in three aspects or three areas in mathematics. The first one is geometry, the second one is topology and the third one is dynamics. So in this talk, I'm gonna focus on topology and see how the presence of foliations can help us determine the homeomorphism type of, of the space we're working with. Okay, so basically, this is just what I said. We have a given Riemannian manifold, and we want to under, understand or classify its geometry or its topology or both. So, this is a brutally general problem. So, to make it more tractable, one possible approach is to break the, the problem into smaller pieces, for example, by splitting the manifold into a collection of submanifolds, how many of submanifolds, to obtain a new space, B, which will have lower dimension and possibly be less complex. And then we can hope to study B and the partition F with the goal of recovering information about it. Um, I want to point out that the the relationships can be changed. Maybe sometimes we care about M and we want to deduce something about the possible base space or so, so we can interchange the hypothesis we want. But here I'm assuming that we cannot understand very good these two guys and then try to deduce things about the big space. So this approach leads us naturally to the study of singular foliations, and since we are care about the Riemannian geometry, Riemannian singular foliations. Okay, so the first, like the, the main examples that we have of singular Riemannian foliations are two large families. The first one is Riemannian submersions. So here we have a map, pi, between two smooth Riemannian manifolds. And submersion just means that the derivative of this map is a uh, onto linear map. So it's mapping the time space at some point of M surjectively onto the base pair time space of the projection of B. So onto. And the second condition is that um, it preserves the metric. So this means that. Um, basically, locally looks like an orthogonal projection of Rn into Rk, where here this is here we are identifying Tpm with Rn, and here we are identifying Rk with T prediction of P B, and well with the respective inner products here G of P and here H of um, okay, and the partition we are considering is given by the images of points in the base space. So really these are the fibers of the vibration. So this is highly related to the theory of fiber points, for those who know. The other large family of examples come from Lie group, acting, Lie groups acting by isometries on a given remaining manifold. So we are given a compact Lie group, and we know that for this particular metric H, it, it acts by isometries. Um, so here the partition that we take is the following. We fix a point P, then look at all the translates of P by all the elements in the group G, and we do this point by point. So this is the partition we are considering, and this approach is coming all the way from the classical ideas of um, Lee, Klein, and so on from the 19th century. 
and just like pushing things all the way to the more general setting. So, okay, so, so what do I mean by reality results or topological reality results? So the following theorem is kind of like the, the example of something that we really want. We want like some geometric conditions and then uh, to be able to deduce the, the topology of this space. So this theorem was proven by Grove and Rommel and Wilkin. We just uh, finished the last case. And it says the following. We consider a compact Riemannian manifold M with sectional curvature bounded below by one and diameter at most pi over two. Then M is either homeomorphic to a sphere or locally asymmetric to a rank one symmetric space. Um, so, in the, okay. So, What's the relation to singular Riemannian foliations? So, in this case, Grove and Rommel split the manifold into two pieces, or given manifold M, into two pieces. And on one piece, which is this B, they constructed a Riemannian submersion by going into the normal bundle of the submanifold. Um, but they were able to show that, well, you could put the, the round metric on this bundle. So at the end, kind of the problem reduces to classifying these type of Riemannian submersions. Once kind of you know what's, who the base space might be here, then you are set up to, to, to determine the homeomorphism. So they need a classification for locate. And the part of Wilkin was showing that k has to be less than three. So they had a missing k. They could not exclude a case. So k equal to seven. They could not. Grove and Rommel could not exclude. Not exclude. But Wilkin yes. Wilkin did. Okay. And the classification is the four. So these Riemannian submersions are either Hop vibrations, well, they're hop vibrations. So for k equal to one, it is this one. So here the fiber is a circle. k to two equal to two cannot happen. And then you have k equal to three. So it's the hop vibration over the quaternionic space. So here the fiber is S3. Okay, so that was kind of our goal. But in general, even if you don't know much about the geometry of the space, you can still say something, at least in low dimensions. So, uh, for example, if we have a simply connected three dimensional manifold, if it admits a closed singular manifoldation, then it has to be diffeomorphic to S3. Um, we will see a proof for uh, not of the whole theorem, but for. One case, just have an idea of how this, this is proved. And in dimension four, something even more magical happens because these guys were also studied. And if you have a four dimensional manifold simply connected with a close singular manifold addition, then it's diffeomorphic to a connected sum of standard spheres, CP2s, or S2 cross S2. And here, the minus. That appears here is just the uh, denoting CP2 but with inverse orientation. Okay, and the magic that I mentioned that happens is this part that you get the standard thing. It's not only fixing kind of the homeomorphism type, but fixing the whole um, differentiable structure on, on the on the manifold. Uh, so. For those in the audience who do not know, it's open. So open the following question. You have a smooth manifold, which is, is it, does there exist a smooth manifold, smooth homeomorphic to S4, but not diffeomorphic. So this is open. And with this, it's, we are kind of seeing that as you have like a little, a tiny bit of symmetry, then 
it, it cannot happen. Well, if, it, if, it, if this manifold exists, then it cannot have any symmetry. Okay. And the idea to prove both of these theorems is to study the local decomposition of the spaces and then track the possible different feasible types of the leaves. Um, also, I'm not putting names here because these are basically, you get them by patching several results from different people together and seeing that at the end, you can give such a low uh, general statement. Okay, so I mentioned already a couple of times the term singular Riemannian foliations and have not defined. So what is a singular Riemannian foliation? Um, it's a partition of M into submanifolds, embedded submanifolds called the leaves, such that the following two conditions happen. There exists a family of smooth vector fields spanning the tiny space, so generating the tiny space of the leaf at any point, you know, the leaf that contains it. Um, we allow these vector fields to be singular, so they can vanish. And this is a smooth condition. So, so for this, we are asked, what we're really saying is that as we move from a leaf to a leaf, the tiny spaces are changing smoothly as we change the, the point. Um, and now the geometric condition. So if we start with a geodesic of M, which is perpendicular to the leaf, so it's leaving the, the, the leaf with a right angle, then it must be perpendicular to all the leaves in intersects. Um, I want to stress out that the dimension of the leaves is in general not constant. So the first examples I'm going to give you, like concrete examples, are the non-interesting ones. So these are the ones that we're not going to consider at all. So since we have to start by giving a partition of our manifold, well, it can happen that we didn't partition at all. So we have just one leaf, and this is kind of not helping us. Or it can happen that we partition things too much. So each leaf consists of just one point. And again, this is not helping us in make the, the, the problem, the general problem I stated at the beginning more tracking. So these are the, the guys that we are going to exclude. As I mentioned before, um, group actions are an important family of singular and manipulations, and they're called homogeneous singular manipulations. I present them again because they're going to be appearing a lot of times in the talk. And sometimes I'm going to be using this term homogeneous. And the homogeneous just means that the leaves have a homogeneous structure. So there are questions of groups. So now a very concrete example. So we take the sphere, if you want, in R3, so the unit sphere that we know, and we foliate it by longitude circles. So the circles that are parallel to the equator. They're not parallel. Um, so this is a singular Riemannian foliation, and what we have to check is the two conditions. So first is, I think it's it's clear that when we take the tangent vector to each curve to each, each circle, this is giving us the the family of vector fields that we need to generate the tangent space of of the leaves. And as you can see from the picture, these vectors get smaller and smaller and smaller until you hit a point, which is the singular leaf corresponding to the north, and there's also one corresponding to the south pole. Okay, the second condition that we need to check is that the geodesic remain orthogonal. So who are the geodesics in, in these two sphere? Well, they are the, the great circles that go from pole to pole. So, Let's say that we start in the equator. So we take a geodesic that's perpendicular to the equator. So that means uh, a great disk, a great circle that's perpendicular to the equator. And we know that it has to go through the north and south pole. And that's basically telling us that it must intersect all the longitude, longitude no, sorry, latitude circles um, uh, orthogonal. So this is really a singular manual foliation. 
Okay. So some uh, adjectives that I want to define because they will, will appear later. So the first one is the leaf space. The leaf space is the, the, the space of equivalent classes. So we have a partition that induces an equivalence relationship. And when we consider the set of equivalent classes, that's this space. And we have a natural projection map from our manifold to this set of equivalent classes, taking a point to its equivalent class. So you can denote by this. Um, since M has a topology, this induces a topology in this space. And the topology is given, generated by the sets here, whose pre-image in here is open. And this is known as the quotient topology, so that's why we call it the quotient space. And it's making this projection continuous by construction. Okay, so we say that a singular Riemannian foliation is of dimension n if the leaves have maximal dimension, of the leaves of maximal dimension have dimension n. We say that it is of co-dimension k if this equation holds, or put it coming back to, to this definition, if the leaves of maximal dimension have co-dimension k in n. It's close if all the leaves are closed. In particular, this implies that the leaf space is housing. So this is telling us that the topology that we consider here, it's, it's a nice one, something that we want. We say that the leaves of maximal dimension are called regular leaves. And if a leaf is not regular, then we just say that it is a singular leaf. Okay, so let's go back to, to, to the example we had. And let's try to find, so we can see that this, this is a closed foliation, right? All the leaves are, are closed, compact spaces without boundary. Um, we see that it has the regular leaves correspond to the circles. So regular leaves are circles, those ones. Um, what else? Um, it, has it has dimension one. So dimension of F is one. This implies that it has co dimension one. F is one. And who's the like leaf space? Well, what we have to do now is for each circle, we must take now a point. So this guy is going to a point, and then as we go down, we're just stacking points. So at the end, we have a closed interval as a leaf space. This is our leaf space. And here I just put each dot representing one of the leaves in the picture. And uh, moreover, we can see that in this case, this edge is kind of being identified with the geodesic that goes from any geodesic that goes from the North Pole to the South. So this is some interesting property that is called polarity of the foliation, but I'm, I'm just mentioning it. I'm not, we, we will not work with this type of foliation in general, um, but it's a special case. Okay, questions so far? Apparently not. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so now let's go into the local topology around the given leaf. So we are going to focus ourselves just on one leaf and see how foliations, how can we describe the foliation around this leaf. So from now on, I'm just going to work with close leaves because it makes life easy. Well, if not, the things I'm going to say are, are not true. Um, so first, we're going to see how the foliation looks around the point. So we fix the point. And now consider the normal space to, to the leaf that goes through the point. So we have our leaf here, LP. Here's P. And here we have normal space. 
and we consider the units here. So really we are considering the boundary, this thing. We map it under the exponential map of M at P to get a new submanifold, SP. And for any point here, we can write it like this. So that's the exponential map of some vector. And set um, LV to be LQ to be the connected component of the intersection that contains Q. So what do I mean by the connected component? So here we have LP, here we have um, SP, and here we have Q. So the leaf of Q might come back and intersect in two different points. So we are, by this, I'm just saying we are going to consider this part. It's where K, K is contained. Okay. And now we set, so this is giving us a partition of SQ, and then we pull it back using the exponential map. Again, the inverse of the exponential map. And we get a single Riemannian foliation of this sphere. Well, it's a, it's a similar foliation, but it will be Riemannian with respect to the round metric. So when we consider SP as a subset of Euclidean space, this foliation becomes a Riemannian foliation. Uh, this is highly non trivial. It was proven by Molino in the 80s. And so far, you can give one objection. You can say, well, what happens if the injectivity radius at P is smaller than, than, red, than one? So, so you cannot take the, the units here. Well, in that case, you take, can take a sphere of, of lower, smaller radius, do the same construction, and, and you get such a foundation. But you now can say, well, what happens if you take like two different spheres of two different radii? The sphere of, of two different radius, you might get two different foundations, right? So, so, so why are you just saying, well, there is one? And that's also part of the work of, of Molino. He showed that it doesn't depend on the radius, and moreover, it doesn't depend on the point at which is on the leaf. It only depends on the leaf. So everything here is so far well defined. So this is a special type of foliation and it's called the infinitesimal foliation of LP. So it's basically telling us how the foliation looks around the given point. Okay, but it's not giving us the whole story about how the foliation looks around the leaf. And the problem is the following. The leaves may twist around a given leaf. So let's see an example of what does this statement mean, twist. So we're going to consider a closed rectangle. We are going to foliate it by horizontal lines. Here, the red line just represents, it, it's just marking the, the line that goes through the middle of the rectangle. And then we're going to identify the sides. We're going to glue them together, but changing orientation. So it's not like this, it's more like this. So I hope, hope everybody kind of sees where I'm getting to. So at the end, we get a Mobius band, and the red line now becomes a red circle going through the middle of the Mobius band. Okay, so let's give the circle some orientation. And now let's fix a point, P. The normal space to the leaf, to the red leaf, is such a line. And we can see that the boundary by construction, boundary of the Mobius span, is a leaf of the foliation. So this leaf is intersecting the normal space in two points. 
So the infinitesimal solution at P is the following. So SP is really the zero dimensional sphere. So it's just like the point N and then the points S, north and south. And the foliation is just a trivial foliation. So FP is just a foliation given by just taking N and then just taking S. So trivial. Okay, so now let's choose one of the points. Let's say this one, the north. So that's represented by a vector pointing in that direction. And now I'm going to move the point around the leaf following the orientation I choose, that uh, I fixed. So it starts going around and I'm driving also the, the vector with it. And then when we go through the twist, something kind of happens. Now we're pointing to the other side. And when we come back, we see that we went from being in the north leaf to the south leaf. So that's what we mean by twisting. Really, the, this leaf is twisting around this, the circle. Or if you want to see it as a covering, when this leaf goes once around, here we have gone just halfway around. Or if we go like once around the, the border, we're going twice around the central leaf. So one and two. Okay, so this is detected by something called the holonomy. Okay, so this implies that given a leaf P, two different leaves may come from the same leaf. This is really what, what we are detecting by this twist. Here we have Two leaves in the infinitesimal position, but they were coming from the same leaf, and that reflected was reflected when we went to the central leaf. So this is detected by the holonomy group associated to the leaf L. And what's going on is that we have a representation of the fundamental group into the group of foliated isometries. So here we are giving a representation of Theta, so pi one of the circle, no, this, the point P is theta, and we are taking it into the isometry group of S zero, which is just theta. So in general, we have the following short exact sequence. So the image of this guy is going to some group called the holonomy, which is contained in the set of orthogonal matrices. But it might not be injective, it might have some kernel, so, um, as we can see from this example. And here we see that actually we, we are hitting the whole group C2. That, that's what we're representing this, what this kind of notation means. Okay, so now does all the leaves have uh, some sort of autonomy? And the answer is no. There are a lot of leaves, which I call principal, for which the holonomy group is trivial. And they actually are, the points contained in these leaves are an open and dense set in them. So here we can see in, in this example, this red leaf is the only one that has holonomy. The rest, when I look at the foliation, so if I had kind of taken a tool and never put around the boundary, I would just see like a parallel collection of lines. Here is the boundary. I, it's only until I get close to, to the really red leaf that I saw, see kind of this sort of twisting. So this is some comment that I'm just going to throw in the air. I'm not going to go deeper into it, but the dimension of the leaves and the conjugacy class of the holonomy group, in this group, give a stratification of the leaf space. 
And again, you can think the holonomy a bit like an obstruction to getting a fiber point. How far are you from, from a fiber point? Okay, so now we have all the ingredients to state how the foliation looks locally around a, a given leaf. So that's known as the slice theorem. It was proven by Mendes and Radeski in 2019. The slice term is coming from group actions, because that's how things are known in, in group actions, but and they say to keep it. Uh, but it's free a tubular neighborhood theorem. So we have a closed single many foliation. We fix a leaf. And the statement is that a tubular neighborhood of this leaf is foliated diffeomorphic to this space. Here, P is the total space of a principal bundle with fiber the holonomy. And for those who are not familiar with this notation, here what we are doing is taking the product, and then the holonomy acts both on this guy and this guy. So we are making it act at the same time on both guys. And then we're taking the quotient space like this. And this notation is just like a way of trying to state that, well, the list of defoliation will be the list of the infinitesimal foliation, but now you need to bring into account that things might be coming from the same connect, from the same leaf. And that's kind of giving you the picture in the transversal direction. So we have the leaf here. Here we have the sphere, and we saw that two leaves might come come from the same leaf in the in the global foliation. So that's this kind of term is taking care into that. But now we need to take care of, of what's going in the tangential direction. So for that kind of um, is this term p. So that term, term p is is telling you well how things are moving parallel to the to the leaf L to this green leaf. And that is great because kind of it's telling you the topology of things, how things are local. And you might want to say like, okay, I have a very nice local description. Let's say that I take out one of these pieces and I find another space which has the same boundary as this space, but for which uh, maybe the leaf, it's a different space or the infinitesimal foliation is different or something. Or maybe even you want to change the metric local. You want to say, well, I want to change the metric on this space. So you do that and now you try to glue them back in. How do you do that? And that's an open problem. We don't know how to glue back these manifolds. And even worse, because now you have like a local, very nice description, and maybe you want to go to a global description. So let's say you, you can say, well, I, I will have k of these two other neighborhoods, and I want to glue them together and, and see at the end what, what I get. Again, we, we don't know how to do this in a controlled way. We only know coming from the big manifold how to get these small two other neighborhoods, but the way around, we do not know. Okay, so let's exemplify how we might use this local information to, to get topological information. So let's focus on, on a very simple case. So we will have closed singular foliation of code dimension one. So in this case, the leaf space is a one dimensional space. So it's either the circle or a closed interval. In the first case, if the leaf space is, is the circle, then we have a smooth fiber bundle. And here L just represents a, gen a generic leaf of the foliation. And I'm gonna, not gonna cover that because that's really the, the theory of fiber bundles, which is pretty much well understood. And, and moreover, kind of this projection is forcing, uh, it is, it, will not work when M is simply connected. So if M is simply connected, you will never have the circle as a leaf space, just by looking at the long exact sequence of homotopy groups of fiber bonds. Okay, so 
we are going to consider the second case, and now we have to simulate this. So let's draw some pictures. So we have our interval one and minus one. And now I'll look at who is the preimage of one and who is the preimage of minus one. So here I have my manifold M, it has some topology. Um, and these guys are contained there. Um, okay, so this will be the only singular leaves I have, and I want to, to look at tubular neighborhoods around these guys, which will translate to looking at preimages of such open sets here. So I apply the tubular neighborhood theorem, and I know that I will get a disk bundle over these leaves. And why is this so? It's coming from the following observation. We have plus minus um, a whole L plus bundle. And it's a principal bundle. So now I can construct uh, something called the associated bundle. And that's exactly this space. So I have such a, a vibration. And now from the picture I had, so I have here the leaf space, here we have the, the open set that we want, here we have the L minus, and we have the two other neighborhoods. So I'm just going to represent it by a point, and here we have the two other neighborhood. But we know that this whole part is just being mapped, the boundary is just being mapped to a point here. So these guys really are leaf because the parameters of points are leaves. Okay, so, and we can even say more. So when we bring into like the, the geometry into account, one can see that the L plus and L minus are minimal submanifolds. That means that the mean curvature of the, it, it's zero. They have zero mean curvature and the leaves are isoparametric manifolds. So this means that the mean curvature is constant as we move along the leaf. So, so let's now focus, this was very general. So now let's fix, let's say the dimension of, of man, the manifold. So assume that M has dimension three. So this, since we have co-dimension one, this implies that co-dimension of, so one equals to co-dimension of the foliation, but it was the dimension of M minus the dimension of the foliation. And here we have three minus the dimension of F. So this implies that the dimension of F is two. So this implies that the dimension of a regular leaf is two. So this means that the singular leaves have either dimension zero or one, because they have dimension less than a two. So either a singular leaf is a point, and then the normal disk is just D3, and we have such a, a bundle. Here we have, this is coming from the bundle plus minus, um, here is P cross all L plus minus L plus minus and here DK plus minus and, and we're looking at the boundary of all these constructions. So here the boundary of D3 is, is 2 and the boundary of this guy is, is L and since this is a point this means that this bundle is trivial so L is S2. In the case when we have the, that the leaves are of dimension one, then the leaves are S1 since they're closed manifold, so of dimension one. And this implies that DK is two. So again, by the same arguments, we take the boundary of D2, so that's S1. We get L as total space, and now we have a fiber over S1. And these bundles are classified by H2, the second commodity group, which is zero. Thus, we get that the bundle 
is a product bundle, it's a trivial bundle, it's a product bundle. So the leaf is T2. Okay, so either, so, so we see that, that if one of the leaves is a point, then the other one has to be a point because if not, we would have two different topologies on, on the principal leaf, on the regular. Um, and if one of them is a circle, then the same um, analysis applies. So we see that M is either the union of two D3s or the union of two solid tors, which is again S3. So now we have, um, we conclude that in both cases, M is equal to S3. And that's related to the, to the first theorem, one of the theorems I presented at the beginning, that if you have a manifold of dimension three with a single Riemannian foliation, it has to be S3. So here we took care of the case of codimension. Um, but in general, this is like way too general still. So maybe we want to fix, let's say, the, the topology of the manifold we are considering. Diego, can I ask a question? Yes. Um, how do you recover the information of by, by which you glue the, these two solid tori or these two disks in order to get S3? Um, well, yeah, there, there's a, probably a diffeomorphism there that you have to choose. Um, it has to be a linear one, so that's restricting you, but, but yeah, you also need to look at, at how you are doing things. But, but this, diffeomorphism, this diffeomorphism comes from the, from the, you can deduce which diffeomorphism you use by means of the foliation, or you choose one somehow? Um, no. Well, it's, it's not that you choose one. It's, it's given by by the geometry of of the, the manifold, but it it still might be too large. Here, we really don't care because we are in very low dimensions, so we're using that. Sorry, but do you as, have a yeah? But could you have like a lens space if the gluing map is not you know? Identifying the, the sort of longitude and latitude. If you just have like a union, ah, sorry, uh, it's a union of two D3s, right? I thought it was a union of uh, D2 crosses one. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, but no, you know, you, you, you need to, to be careful. Like in higher dimensions, you need to be careful. Look more carefully at how things are, are being glued in Rob. OK, thank you. OK, so okay, so this was very general. So now let's try to fix the topology of, of, of the leaves we are considering. So this brings us to, to let's say we want the most symmetric leaves possible, Tora. So examples of this type of collisions are given by cipher vibrations or torus actions. Um, Okay, so this is the setup we, we have. We will consider only simply connected manifolds with closed singular manifoldation such that the principal leaves are homeomorphic to an n-dimensional torus and, and we'll start building up things from there. So we fix a leaf. It might be singular of dimension n minus L. So one can see that the, this leaf will be covered by the torus of the same dimension. And the covering is controlled by the whole order. Um, and moreover, if we fix a point in the leaf and we fix a point a vector normal to the leaf, perpendicular to the leaf, such that when we exponentiate the leaf that contains this point is a principal leaf, remember that those leaves are open dense, so we can find such a vector. Then we have a Riemannian submersion of this form. So by looking at the long homotopic set sequence, which will be in general like this, we can cancel all, all case here is sorry, it should be K here. We can cancel all the groups except for K equal to one, and we get such a short exact sequence. And by analyzing it, we can 
tells you that this leaf is also a torus. And we are going to analyze this inclusion more carefully. So the, the claim is that this torus is determined by a list of vectors with integer uh, entries. And we have exactly L and the vectors are, have N entries. So to fix an example, let's consider such a, a bundle. Um, so here S1 corresponds to a closed loop inside T2, which let's say starts in this point, it must end up in this point. So it's doing something, but at the end, uh, we, will, we can homotope everything to having such a line. And the vector that we are considering here is the following, is just telling us that it's going once around this edge. So this means that as if I take a point here, point here and I project it and then move this point and I see where it's, this point is moving, it's just going once around this. But if I do it for the other direction, then I can see that it's going once here, and then it's going again when I do this. So that's the two. And in general, what we're really doing is looking at the short exact sequence. We are taking the generators, EI, of C tail, once we make an, uh, make an identification of pi one of LV with C tail, and then seeing where it's being mapped. To. So this is being mapped to one of these vectors, AI. And that's where the vectors are coming. So to su summarize, for a leaf of dimension L in a collision by Tori, we have such a vibration and the leaf is covered by, has this covering. So as I mentioned before, this vibration is determined by a list of vectors and then the topology. So this leaf is, is this space is determined by these vectors. And then we can think of this as a quotient of how this inclusion. So this is telling us who this guy is. And then the holonomy is telling us who the leaf space. So the, we get the following proposition. The leaf of dimension n minus l is determined by the vectors and the holonomy. But we can do better because we can apply the tubular neighborhood theorem and then just see who is who. So, so we know that p is a principal bundle covering. So it's easy to see that when we fix a leaf of dimension n minus l, then this bundle corresponds to the covering we already had. So, okay, we, we found this space. Um, and now the, the infinitesimal collision is just being determined by, um, by how the LV is being contained here. And moreover, we also know that the total space is determined by this list of vectors. So at the end, the claim is that the tubular neighborhood of L is determined by this list of invariants. Okay, so now we are going to go try to go low. So we consider the simply connected manifold we consider the, its leaf space and we adorn it with, with the information we already ha have. So for example, if, let's assume that the position has co dimension two, the leaf space is a disk. And let's say that these are singular leaves with no holonomy. So we will put a vector in there and we, we go around like this for, for all the leaves in here. So, okay, so, so now kind of look in the leaf space, we see that things are going nicely. 
because the two layer neighborhoods correspond to, to small neighborhoods here. So we are able kind of to patch things up. Um, so the question, the natural question is, can we go global? So do the local invariants determine the manifold or at least the foliation? And the problem I told you is that, well, maybe below we know how to do things, but above we, do, we don't know how to translate it above. So we need an extra tool to do this. And that's a cross section. So a cross section is a continuous map going from the least space to the total space, which is a right inverse of the projection map. So if I go with the section and then project again, I get the identity map. So with this, um, we can prove the following statement for singular Riemannian foliations by Tori. So we take two simply connected manifolds with foliations by Tori, so M1 and F2. And assume that for both, we have cross sections. Moreover, let, let us assume that M1 is homeomorphic to M2. Sorry, the leaf space of M1 is homeomorphic to M2. And this homeomorphism is one that will preserve the sets of invariants. That is, if I look, let's say I have my leaf here, and I have this collection of invariants associated to this point. And this is being mapped by the homeomorphism phi to another point in the leaf space. I don't know. Here. And then I look at the collection. So this is the collection one, collection one. And here I have collection two. And I'm asking that the collection one agrees with collection two. That's what I'm asking, saying by preserves invariance. Okay, so with this, the conclusion that is that M1 is foliated homeomorphic to M2. And that's kind of exactly what the previous slide was telling us, or the question we were making in, in, in this previous slide. Because with this cross section, we are able to control how we, we patch things together. Okay, so I have eight minutes. I will try to, to like fix this at least for what I mentioned too, so you have a better feeling of what's going on here. So in what I mentioned too, the leaf space is a simply connected surface since the manifold we started was simply connected, then it's either S2 or B2. In the first case, we will have again a fiber point. So from the long sequence of homotopy groups, this guy, um, we can cancel all the homotopy groups that have TN and we get such these Longest exuberance will look like this. I don't care. There will be higher terms, but I don't care about them. And the important thing is that phi one of Tn is C time. So I will have such a short exuberance at the end. And since it's a long, a short exuberance, this map has to be surjective. So this is telling me that n has to be one. So thus the leaf space is one. The, 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 leaf, the, the leaf, a regular leaf is, is one. And since we have fixed the co-dimension to two, this implies that M has dimension three. So M must be S3. Okay. So now we're going to assume that the leaf space is D2. And then we're going to use that when we take the infinitesimal foliation, we are using uh, a dimension. So we have co dimension one and it's by Torah. So, uh, resolved by Velas Garcia and Radetzky, they classify these foliations by Torah of co dimension one on simply connected manifolds, and they saw that this, this is S3, or this is the first example we saw. And moreover, you can see how the, the leaves distribute themselves in the leaf space. So the leaf space is a disk. All the leaves 
that lie in the interior of the disk will be principal. So they will be homeomorphic to TN. All the divs in the deep space in the boundary will be singular. And moreover, there will be isolated ones, which will be homeomorphic to TN minus two. And the leaves that lie on the edges between these points are homeomorphic to TN minus one. Okay, so, so that's great. So basically saying us that we don't have any holonomy and we just have to find out who the interior vectors are in our collection of invariants, local invariants. So since we, these invariants are coming from, from this similar infinitesimal affiliation, so we have the fiber is as one, is being mapped into Tn and is being projected into Tn minus one. So really we just have one vector with n entries. And in theory, we would need also to determine these two guys, but one can see in this case that once you know the weights corresponding to, to the leaves in this edge, that determines the weight here. So it's, it's kind of redundant. So this was a general statement. And what, the only thing we have to check is that there are cross sections to, to be able to say, well, in condemnation two, the positions are, are determined by the weights. And one can prove that. So what I did right here is, in this case, what I mentioned two, two, there exist cross sections. So the corollary is that we have a what I mentioned two collision by Torah is completely determined by the weights. Okay, but now we can ask ourselves what's going on with Torah's actions, how these weights compare to to torus actions because torus actions will also give polyations by torrent. So let's take a torus action of code I mentioned too. And all had also proved already proven that for torus actions, a similar statement is true. The action is determined by the weights. And here, the weights for here are the isotropy information of the action. So kind of we have two different sets of invariants and you want to compare them. And once you compare them, you see that the weights by collisions agree with the weights for actions. So basically this is telling us that on a single, a similar manifold addition by Torah, I've got to mention too, on a simply connected manifold is given by a torus action up to a foliated homeomorphism. And in general, this is because we only get homeomorphism because in the general statement, we only have here homeomorphism. Um, and here we have also a problem. So the problems that we have is that the leaf spaces might not be smooth manifolds in general. And thus the best we, we can expect as a relations between the two is a homeomorphism. But in the case of code I mentioned two, we had a disk. So in that case, we know that we have a unique, for, for, for a new, a unique uh, differentiable structure and any homeomorphism can be improved to a diffeomorphism. The next thing we can check is kind of that the sections have to be smooth, but still we are not able to, to improve here are things to diffeomorphism because of this. In dimensions at least seven, there exist smooth manifolds, huh? homeomorphic to the torus, in dimension n, but not diffeomorphic to it. And that's a big, big problem. And as I mentioned, the leaf spaces in there are not a smooth manifold. But still, in current dimension two, you can overcome, as I mentioned, you can overcome here smoothness problem, here you can find a smooth structure, here you can get a diffeomorphism, and now you only have to deal with this. 
And again, by looking closely at, at things and carefully, one can see that the leaves in that case must, it cannot be an exotic torus. It has to be a standard torus. So here you're able to improve diffeomorphism when you throw in the condition code I mentioned. So at the end, we get a, a singular manifold deletion by Tori, of course, I mentioned too, on a compact simply, simply connected manifold is given by Smith Torus action up to a diffeomorphism, which is great because for Torus actions, we can get a classification of the homeomorphism type of the manifold. So if we have such a manifold simply connected, um, with a similar manipulation by Troy of quarter dimension two, or if you want by a torus action of quarter dimension two, then M is diffeomorphic to the sphere when M equals three. I connected sum of these guys when M equals four. And then two options. Either we have a connected sum of S2 process S3, or a connected sum of the same copies, but now we are adding this copy and this tilde just means that we have the S3 bundle over S2, which is not trivial, the non trivial S3 bundle over S2. And in dimension six, something similar, we get a similar statement, but now we get a bit more topology. So either we have this family or we have this family. And again, this is the, this first term represents the four dimensional sphere bundle, the non trivial four dimensional sphere bundle over S2. Um, and in theory, if, if, if we get kind of a nice list in higher dimensions, we, we now have kind of the tools to, to, to compare it if the manifold is in the list that you, you give me. Um, so that's all I wanted to talk to you about and I thank you for, for your attention. <laughs>